Well, the government shutdown has ended for the moment temporarily, but the battle over a border wall continues. The Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, has vowed that she will never fund that wall under any circumstances. The president promises he's going to build one. So that seems to leave the White House with one option, declare a national emergency and order the building of a wall on our southern border. That sounds like a pretty radical solution. But is it? Well, it turns out that national emergencies happen all the time, and somehow very few of them receive any attention at all. In 1976, Congress passed the National Emergencies Act. That law grants the president the power to declare a state of emergency in response to virtually anything if he thinks it's necessary. National emergencies can be renewed annually and routinely are. Congress can only block a state of emergency with a two-thirds vote. So it's a very broad law, and it's been applied a lot. It began in 1979. President Jimmy Carter declared a national emergency to keep Iranian government property from entering the United States. That emergency is still ongoing, despite being older than Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, for example. Since that date, American presidents have declared no fewer than 58 national emergencies, and 31 of them are still ongoing right now. The average state of emergency in this country has lasted for nine and a half years. So what are some of these emergencies? Well, some really were emergencies. September 2001, for example, President Bush announced a state of emergency that gave the White House greater authority to mobilize the military, call out the National Guard, and perform other counter-terrorist actions. That emergency has been dutifully renewed each of the past 18 years. So that was real. We've also had a decade-long national emergency to combat the swine flu. President Trump has declared three national emergencies already. Bet you didn't know that. One of them sanctioned those who use social media to influence elections, those dastardly Macedonians. Another national emergency condemned the government of Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega. That was a national emergency. And yet another ongoing national emergency punishes anyone who works to, quote, undermine the sovereignty of Lebanon. Lebanon. You see the point here? In Washington, protecting the sovereignty of a faraway Middle Eastern country that very few Americans will ever go to qualifies as a national emergency. Protecting our own country's sovereignty is, quote, immoral. And we're not overstating that. Just this week, four freshman Democrats in the House co-signed a letter demanding lower funding for America's border enforcement. In other words, it is virtuous to protect others. It is wrong to protect ourselves and our own children. What's the name for that attitude? Well, self-hatred would be one. Should people who hate the country be in charge of it? Douglas McGregor is a retired U.S. Army colonel who has worked to defend the country, author of the book Margin of Victory. He joins us tonight. Colonel, thank you very much for coming on. Good. Do you think it's wise for the president to declare a national emergency to secure the border? Yeah, absolutely, without question. I mean, if you've got 30 million illegal residents inside your country who violated your borders, disregarded the rule of law, you've got a national emergency. We've had this for many years, so that's absolutely the case. Secondly, only the president can address this. He has the constitutional authority to do so. What he needs is an executive order on, modeled on what I have written and I think is now widely uh, appreciated inside the Fox News community that effectively says, look, Secretary of the Army, uh, your mission is to secure the border. You've got 30 days, use whatever forces you need. We'll write up the rules of engagement. Uh, we'll provide you with whatever funding is necessary, but you will secure the border. Now, while the Army does that, we can proceed with building barriers. We also have an organization called the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and they can be tasked to build barriers. All of the funds Wait, necessary to do this can be released. Flood control. <laughs> well, they're, they have flood control missions and all sorts of missions inside the United States, but the point is you have Army forces that are engineers brigades of engineers that can be put to work on the border and build barriers. He doesn't need special permission. He has the constitutional authority to act as the commander in chief. He doesn't need any help from Congress at all. And so this is a national emergency. Let there be no doubt about it. You're confusing me because I live here and it was my understanding that the point of the U.S. Armed Forces was to guarantee the sovereignty of countries we'll never visit yeah. and can't spell. That's not the case. The, the sovereignty of Lebanon, for example. Yeah, well, look, here's good news. We have thousands of soldiers, sergeants, lieutenants, captains, majors, lieutenant colonels, who have guarded and secured other people's borders. So they know exactly how to do this. All we're trying to do is defend our own borders. 
And when you defend it, you defend it. Someone tries to cross your border illegally, you stop them. Once you stop them, you can biometrically tag them so you have them in a database and you turn them around and send them back. And you tell them if you come back again, you will face prison time. You will be prosecuted for violating our laws. That's how you expel people. You don't just leave your borders open and say, here's a camp, move into it while we decide what to do with you. The president can outline these legal uh, restrictions in a, an executive border uh, order, and he needs to do it as soon as possible. So this would not be the first time that the U.S. military has secured the oh, American no, we borders. Were, we, I mean, that's why we have a military. Yeah, the army was, was there from 1846 to 1946. Exactly. So why are White House lawyers telling the president that he does not have the authority to do this? Oh, that's an easy answer, because the president has surrounded himself for the last two years with people who are there to subvert him, to obstruct his agenda. Everyone is there to tell him no. And that's not an answer that he should accept. He has the authority. He needs to act. I was glad to see that he took the Secretary of the Army with him to visit the border when he went down to Texas. I hope the Secretary of the Army is thinking about this because that's his job. Does the Secretary of the Army have constitutional authority to make policy? No, but he has a constitutional obligation and mission to defend the borders of the United States. Right. Colonel Douglas McGregor, thank you very much for that. Interesting.